You ready for this? I read a letter that someone wrote to God, and this is what it said. Dear Lord, so far today I am doing all right. I have not gossiped. I have not lost my temper. I've not been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or self-indulgent. I have not whined, cursed, or even eaten any chocolate. However, I am about to get out of bed in a few minutes. <laughs> and I will need a lot more help after that. Amen. Can anybody relate to that? I'm going to talk to you women to women today. How many of you know life can get hectic? <laughs> Lady back there, both hands, both feet. How many of you know life can get overwhelming? It can get stressful, right? Um, I was going to San Antonio yesterday. My 15-year-old started driving. She called me. It's an hour uh, later there in Dallas. And she said, Mom, I'm going to go on the highway today. <laughs> Everybody say, Jesus. <laughs> And so I'm on the plane and I'm fixing to take off. And then the next text that I get from her after a little while, it says this, mom, I pulled over. I think I'm lost. There's a whole lot of traffic on the highway. And then my, my service went off because I was up in the air. <laughs> so life can get a little stressful. I always make her text me when she gets there and when she, she leaves. Anyway, good story. She made it. So that was good. But my point is it can get a little stressful at time. And you know, um, I like to say it like this, life is like a roller coaster. There's ups and downs and we scream a lot along the way. I saw a card that says, I found that a nice long hot bath can solve most of the day's problems. You open it up and it says, I've been in here since last Thursday. <laughs> How many of you can relate to that? <laughs> and sometimes we're not sure if life is trying to pass us by or if it's trying to run us over. And all of a sudden we look at the calendar and can you believe we're even into October? I mean, I think somebody said there's 13 more Fridays or maybe 12 more Fridays till Christmas. <gasps> Time to go shopping. <laughs> yes, Lord, we heard that today, right? <laughs> and yet, ladies, I wonder this, how many days are we, how many of these days are we taking to actually enjoy? Enjoy our moments in life. You know, I found that most people are just kind of surviving in life. Instead of leading their lives, they're accepting their lives. They're going through the motions with good intentions, with good goals in mind, feeding your kids, taking care of things at your house, doing work and doing everything you do. But if we can be honest with ourselves, sometimes it's with very little enjoyment. Can I get a witness in here today? So often, maybe you can relate to this, we're either thinking of the future. This is what I have to do tomorrow. This is what I have to do when I wake up. Or we're regretting what happened in the past. Man, I wish I wouldn't have acted that way. I wish I wouldn't have said those things to my kids. So we have the future pulling at us in one direction and the past pulling in another direction at the, at the expense of the present moment. And so, you know, I wonder, what are we doing to take, to be intentional about enjoying the moment? And, you know, I'm not talking about everything in our life being perfect. Because how many of you know that's probably not going to happen? Maybe in the Neiman household, but not in my household. <laughs> and you know what I'm, I'm going to talk to you about today is I'm not even talking about how the amount of money you have in the bank, what's going on in your life right now, how big your house is, how big your car is. No, it's nothing like that what I'm going to talk to you about today. I like the way Jim Carrey said it. He said, I think everybody should get rich and famous and do everything that they ever dreamed of so that they could see that that is not the answer. Oprah said, having the best things in life is no substitute for having the best life. So for the next few moments, I want to talk to you about the business of life, the business of your life. I want to talk to you about enjoying the journey while you're getting to where you're going, because how many of you are going somewhere? How many of you want to enjoy your journey? Do you know that experts say that your outlook shapes your life more than your life shapes your outlook? In other words, you can't control everything that happens to you, but you can control your response to what, what happens to you. Attitude is everything. Everybody say, attitude is everything. This is what we have to do to enjoy our, our lives. We have to take control of our attitudes. There was an elderly man, George. He was well into his 80s. Every day he, at 9.15, he went to St. Christopher's Nursing Home to have breakfast with his wife. His wife suffered from Alzheimer's, and she had not recognized her husband in the past five years. And there was this nurse that noticed how George came every single day. She was new to the facility. She watched him come every single day. 
finally one day she stopped him and she said, George, you come every day to have breakfast with your wife at 9.15, even though she no longer knows who you are? George smiled and he patted her hand and he looked at her straight in the eyes and he said this, she may no longer know who I am, but I still know who she is. See, attitude is everything. The right attitude finds that one ray of hope in seemingly the worst situations. It finds the good in the midst of the bad. It finds the light in the midst of the darkness. See, folks, it's not about what you look at that matters. It's all about what you see. You've heard the story of my mom in 1981. She was 48 years old. Just to give you background, in case you weren't here the times before I've been here, I'm the youngest of the Osteens, and I am the favorite child. <laughs> you can write that in your notes. <laughs> At this particular time of the story, my brothers and sisters were gone, either married or in college, and my mom had never been sick. And I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, just briefly, I'm talking about attitude. She had a pain in her side, anyway, it was cancer. The doctors gave her a few weeks to live. My dad looked at the doctor, said, we believe in miracles. The doctor looked back at daddy and said, you're gonna need a miracle. Daddy and his little five foot seven self looked back at the doctor and said, we're gonna get our miracle. Well, I saw my mom, <clears throat> you know, the end of the story, but I saw my mom as the only kid at home. I watched what she did when bad things happened to good people. I watched her attitude and what she did in the midst of a bad situation. I saw her take on an attitude of a warrior, Shannon, just like your mama. I saw her take on the attitude of a fighter. And she would go around my house and she would say things like this. I'm so grateful to see the sunrise today. <clears throat> At night when she would eat dinner with daddy and myself, she would say, it's such a blessing to be able to eat with y'all. And I told you when we would pass a graveyard, my mom would quickly shout out, with long life he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. I'm so grateful to be alive today. See, while most people looked at a graveyard and saw death, mama looked at a graveyard and was reminded of the life that she still had. Attitude is everything. Amen? <clears throat> See, folks, dwelling on the negative simply contributes to its power. Maybe we should stop focusing on everything that's going wrong in our lives and begin to focus on the things that are going right in our lives. Maybe we should count our blessings instead of our burdens. <laughs> Amen? Maybe we should be grateful for the problems that we don't have. Maybe every single day we should look for the positive, even though some days we have to look a little bit harder. Attitude is everything. Here's something else. How else can we enjoy our journey? This is really deep. Are you ready for it? I'm going to give it to you in the Greek. Lighten up. <laughs> I'm just kidding about the Greek. <laughs> Everybody say it with me. I need to lighten up. <laughs> to enjoy my journey, I need to lighten up. I'll talk now. What do I mean? We need to stop getting our panties in a ruffle and our boxers in a bunch for the guys that are here, unless you wear boxers. <laughs> Reba McIntyre said, to survive in life, we need three things, a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Listen, ladies, we need to remember to laugh. Sometimes life gets so hectic that we forget to laugh. You know what? There's, there's good stuff going on out there. And, and we just need to remember to take time to laugh. Do you know that laughing 100 times has the same effect on the body as being on an exercise bike for 15 minutes? <gasps> Do you know a daily dose of laughter can burn up over to over five pounds of fat over the course of a year? You can lose weight tonight, today <laughs> at this conference. Listen, Sarah laughed when God told her she was going to have a baby at 90. We need to remember to laugh. You may say, April, you don't know what's going on in my life. There's nothing funny going on in my life. Let me tell you something. You can probably laugh at yourself. You got some really good material. I sent my youngest daughter a text that said, you're right, and autocorrect changed it to, you're ugly. <laughs> we laughed. I sent my friend Misty right here years ago a text that said, you're the best. I read it later, and it said, you're the beast. <laughs> Sorry, Misty, she forgave me for that. We laughed. <laughs> I was in a Starbucks drive through in Dallas a few years ago. The guy repeated my order, and I said, that's it. He said, great, see you at the window. I rolled up the window and said, okay, thank you. Then something else came out of my mouth. I said, thank you, love you. <laughs> I thought, did I just tell the Starbucks guy that I loved him? 
I was so embarrassed. I wanted out of that line. There were cars in front, cars behind, a curb on the side. I was stuck. I prayed, God, just take him out. <laughs> whatever you need to do. I was so embarrassed. And finally, I got up to that window and my car was low to the ground and I just felt this presence hovering over the window just like this. I looked up, there was this good looking young guy. I wish my girls were in the car with me. He had a smile as big as Texas, pearly white teeth. And the first thing out of his mouth was this, was this. So you love me, do you? I wanted to say, just be quiet and give me my coffee. <laughs> You know what, I finally got my coffee and I said, I just love everybody and I sped off. <laughs> you know what, it's hard to be depressed when you're laughing. Proverbs says this, a merry heart does good like a medicine. We need to rem remember to take a good dose of laughter, amen? Blessed are those who can laugh at themselves for they will never cease to be amused. I'm talking fast, are y'all listening fast? How else can we enjoy our journey? This is a good one. Stay calm. I'm going to say it again because that deserved a better amen. Stay calm. Amen. Oh, that's good. Sometimes we just have to flat out make the decision to stay calm. And all the men said amen on that one. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. Just stay calm. Listen, ladies, the chaos around you should never override the calm within you. I loved Pastor Neiman, what he said a few years ago when I was here, Pastor Jared and all them were up here and Shannon was interviewing them. And one thing that you said, I might get the words a little bit wrong, but you said this, tone down or dial down the drama. I loved that session. I thought that was so great. Sometimes we need to dial down the drama, right? I heard somebody say this, you're allowed five emotional minutes in the day, then you gotta be gangsta, right there. <laughs> <clears throat> We need to be disciplined about what we respond and react to. Oh, that's so good. Just, become, just because some people are fueled by drama does not mean that you have to attend their performance. Save the drama for somebody else's mama. Cancel your subscription to their issues. My youngest daughter, 15, wanted to take drama lessons. Acting lessons, I thought, really? Do we really need to take them? Don't you think there's enough drama in this house right now? We could pay people to come to our house. <laughs> Don't waste your energy on things you can't control. Protect your peace. Oh my goodness, this is so important. Everybody say, I'm gonna protect my peace. Anything that costs you your peace is too expensive. Chase after your peace. You are the peacemaker in your home. Psalm 91 says to remain stable and fixed. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, in the Amplified it says, shall remain stable and fixed. We need to be stable, ladies. Our emotions should not rule us, amen? First Peter 5, 8, be well balanced. Everybody say that with me, be well balanced. Because your adversary, the devil, is seeking about whom he may devour. See, you cannot allow your emotions to dictate your life. Somebody's going to go home with some revelation right here. We cannot allow our emotions to make our decisions. You know what? You need to figure out your trigger points. If you, what happens when you get emotional? Do you want to go to the refrigerator and eat? Do you want to go... I don't know, punch something? Maybe not somebody, but punch something? You know, I know, I know this personally for me, when I, when I have a lot on my mind or I'm feeling a little, little anxious, I go for a walk. <laughs> the other day I walked 10 miles. You can tell how much it was on my mind right there. <laughs> but find out your trigger points. Instead of reacting, you know what? Say, God, I'm just going to put this down for a minute. And I'm going to go do something healthy. I'm going to do, I'm not going to react right now. I'm going to wait till I have control of myself, till I'm calm and peaceful, and then I will respond, right? Don't allow your emotions to dictate your mood. Ooh, that's a good one. You know what? You, you are not Judy Moody. <laughs> Take control of your emotions. Listen, ladies, just because you're having a bad moment does not mean that you have to make everybody else around you feel bad. Amen. Just because you are feeling pain at the moment does not mean that you have a right to be a pain. Amen? <laughs> Stay calm. Be cool. Your vibe really attracts your tribe. 
Your vibe really affects your tribe. My mom is old school, born in 1933. She sent me a question the other day, and I said, I don't know, Mama, I didn't like that vibe. (laughs) She sent back, I don't like that word, it's new age. I said, okay, Mama, I just don't like the way it was feeling at the moment. So anyway, don't let the word vibe mess you up. Your vibe really does affect those around you, right? Make sure you're giving off the right stuff. Everything in your life that is happening right now, well, not everything, but you know what I mean. Everything that's going on is is a decision that you've made. If your house is chaos, you know what? Think about the decisions that you've made. I'm not trying to condemn anyone. I'm trying to help us, right? I'm talking about the business of life. Make sure you're making the right decisions. If you want a different, different thing to come about, then make different choices. We don't change by chance, we change by choice, amen? Stop allowing life to happen to you, you happen to life. Stop allowing bad cycles to keep going on in your life. Don't sit there and say, well, I do this because I have a bad temper. No, you shouldn't have a bad temper. Get rid of it. Just say, no, God, help me to break this cycle in my life. Help me to stop. You know what? Let's just stop right here. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we're going to break off any unhealthy cycles or patterns that have been passed down to us that are not of you. In Jesus' name, Father, today's the day that we're making a decision that we're going to plant a new family tree, one of life, one of laughter, one of peace, one of happiness, and one of joy in Jesus' name. Now listen, this is also important. Be careful how you are talking to yourself because you are listening. The words you speak become the house that you live in. What kind of house are you living in? Listen, ladies, this is what I found. Every day I have to get up and I have to talk to myself. I have to look in the mirror and I have to say things to myself. You need to get up and say things like this. I am calm and peaceful. You may not be, but once you start saying it enough to yourself, you'll start to become those things that you believe you are. Amen? I am calm and peaceful. I will not allow circumstances to upset me. I will rise above the challenges and the difficulties. I choose happy. I choose joy. I choose peace. My words will be pleasant today in Jesus' name. My surroundings will be peaceful. My outlook will be positive the circumstances around me, around me will not dictate the joy within me. I will have a great day. I will have a productive day. I'm going to put my hair up in a bun, drink some coffee, put some lipstick on, and I'm going to handle everything that comes my way. I've got this because God is on my side. Amen? Talk to yourself. How else can we enjoy our journey? We need to be smart. We need to make wise choices. What do I mean? Let me make it practical for you. If you feel like your life is sinking down the drain, everything's falling apart, don't sit down, close the curtains, turn off the lights, wrap up in a blanket, and watch Titanic. (laughs) Be smart. (laughs) Make wise choices. If your relationships are falling apart, don't listen to every bad breakup song that there is. I'm going down, down, down in a burning ring of fire. Come on, we got to be smart. (laughs) And hey, ladies, don't tell everyone about your problems because you know what? Not everyone is for you. No matter how bad things are, we can always make them worse. Be careful who you surround yourself with. I like to say don't surround yourself with the leeches of life, the joy killers, dream stealers, sad makers, life suckers, bubble busters, moment takers, and happy distractors. (sighs) Breathe on that one. (laughs) People inspire you or they drain you. Choose them wisely. Surround yourself with people who strengthen your character and remove yourself from people who make you compromise your character. Remember this, ladies. Some people are like clouds. When they disappear, it's a brighter day. And I'm not talking about your spouses. (laughs) Make wise choices. Become the CEO of your life. Promote, demote, and terminate as necessary. How else can we enjoy our journey? This is a little bonus I threw in there. We need to forgive people. Amen. Amen. See, when we have something against someone else, those people have power over our destiny, but they also have power over our present moment. We need to just let it go. Go sing that Frozen song, let it go and let it go. (laughs) And move forward in life. You know, forgiving someone does not make them right. It simply sets you free. Free, and I want to be free. How about you? 
How else can we enjoy our journey? We can be a giver. We can help someone else out. My dad used to say, find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. You know what, ladies, when we're helping someone else out, when we're giving to someone else, it takes our focus off of our present circumstances. And in all reality, it takes our focus off of ourselves. My mom was in a meeting not long ago, and a lady came up to her. And she, she said, Dodie, do you remember who I am? And my mom thought, I remember the face, but I don't remember exactly who she is. Anyway, she said her name, and she said, I used to play baseball with you or softball with you. And my mom remembered, and she told me this story. She said, you may not know this, when my mom was one and a half years old, she contracted polio. So one of her legs is, is real cute. It's real little. She, one shoe wears a 12 and a half kids, and the other wears a two and a half kids. And you never know it. Mama has never been a, really a, impacted by that greatly. But she's, she's gr grown up with this. So when she was about eight or nine, she played softball. And because of her little leg, she could hit really well, but she couldn't run the bases too well. She couldn't run very quickly. So this lady, 65 years later, comes up to her, and she said, I'm the one that used to run the bases for you. And my mom so remembered that lady because she would hit the ball, and this lady every time would run the bases for her. See, ladies, we need to find somebody that we can run the bases for. We need to find someone that we can help out of a bad situation. We need to get the focus off of ourselves. We need, to, we need to learn to be sensitive to the needs of those around us. We have 1,440 minutes in every day. That means we have 1,440 opportunities to make a positive impact. Don't ever waste the ability to change someone's life. Make giving part of your growth strategy, amen? Let me bring it home to you. You may say, April, you know what? Oh, this is great. I would love to enjoy my journey, but you have no idea what's going on in my house right now. You have no idea the situation that I'm facing right now, my financial difficulty, my marital difficulty. You don't know what my kids are doing at this moment. It's just stressing me out. You know what? You're right. I have no idea what's going on in your life right now. But I can tell you this, that you can make what's going on in your life right now either a page of your story or a chapter of your story. The choice is up to you. And you know what, just because it's a bad day doesn't mean that it has to be a bad life. You have to choose to be happy, right? John Lennon said this, when I was five years old, my mother always told me happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what, what I wanted to be when I grew up, and I told them happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment. I told them they didn't understand life. Do you know God wants us to be happy? And you know what I've discovered is this, you have to be happy on purpose. You can't just wake up and let the day dictate to you, you have to dictate to the day how you are going to feel, amen? Every 60 seconds you spend unhappy or upset is a moment of happiness that you will never get back. And the truth is, ladies, we can always think of a reason to be happy. We can always think of something that brings joy to our life. This is how else we can enjoy our journey. We need to write down the things that bring joy to our lives. I'd encourage you to do this maybe today, maybe once a week, maybe sometimes every day. What brings joy to my life? Because the truth is there's always something to be joyful about. I made a list and I wanted to share it with you so you could know what I'm talking about. What brings me joy? Early morning, a blanket, coffee, and my Bible. A clean house a clean car, and I pray it's that way when I get back home today. <laughs> what brings me joy? Warm, homemade chocolate cake. The right pair of shoes. Shoot, any pair of shoes. <laughs> what brings me joy? Christmas, the perfect pair of boots, warm fuzzy socks, a full tank of gas, red velvet cups from Sprinkles Bakery. What brings me joy? Yummy smelling candles, hot bubble baths, turkey chili and fritos on a cold, cold day. What brings me joy? Passing a cop that is hiding and me totally going the speed limit. Some of you so can't write that one down. 
listening to Frank Sinatra, shopping, my Keurig coffee maker, <laughs> paying for the person behind me without them knowing it, red Christmas cups at Starbucks. What brings me joy? The sound of rain, the sound of my kids laughing, remembering the sound of my father's voice. <laughs> what brings me joy? living in a free country, being with you here today, seeing lives changed, waking up, breathing, getting another chance to see another day. See, ladies, so often we look for joy in the extraordinary when in all reality, joy is sprinkled all over your life. It's celebrating what already is right now, right here, all around you. Life doesn't have to get good for you to start enjoying it. You can't change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. You can clap. <laughs> Life doesn't have to get good for you to start enjoying it. I'll tell you one more story. When my youngest daughter, Ariella, was about four years old, we were in the living room. And it was very loud in my house. I have five kids and four dogs. This time I had two dogs. Everything was going on. The TV was blaring so loud that I'm pretty sure that the neighbors could hear it because we were waiting to see who the next president of the United States was going to be. My husband was saying, I can't hear the TV. I'm sure the whole neighborhood could hear the TV. <laughs> my dogs were running around barking. My son was harassing my daughter to the point of the, that she didn't think it was funny anymore. My two daughters were doing round-offs in the living room, and all I kept hearing was, Mom, watch this. Mom, watch this. Mom, watch this. I must have watched 150 round-offs. It was so loud. It was so chaotic. I was trying to correct my son. I was trying to look at the round-offs. I was trying to turn the TV up more, and I was trying to get my, do my dogs to be quiet. When all of a sudden, my youngest daughter came up to me, and she put this piece of paper right in front of me. I mean, she had made me a, a pretty drawing on the top. It, it had a rainbow, and it had a tree, and then it had she and I sitting next to each other holding hands, and we had long hair, and we had some styling boots on. <laughs> I thought, I have taught you well. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> she put that down, and she took time to color this pretty picture, and on the top of it, this is what it says, Mommy, I love you. And what I realized in that moment, my little four-year-old taught me a lesson. See, she didn't care who the next president of the United States was. She didn't care about her brother. She didn't care about the, do the dogs barking. She could care less if she saw, saw another round off in, in her whole life. In the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the noise, what she wanted me to know was the most important thing. Mommy, all this doesn't matter. Mommy, I love you. See, ladies, we need to remember what's important in life. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't stress over things that you cannot control. Never get too busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Stop stressing over dirty laundry. I mean, get it done, but stop stressing over it. <laughs> stop stressing over spilled milk. You can clean it up. Stop getting mad over situations that, you know what, you really have no business getting mad over. Make every day your masterpiece. Listen, ladies, the moment you start acting like life is a blessing is the moment that it starts to feel like one. <laughs> Enjoy your journey. And remember this, we only get one shot at this thing called life. Let's make it count. I love you all. God bless you.